It's been said that if you gather all the ink used to print 1991 Donruss baseball cards in one place, we would have to change our mythology to reference the eight C's. But are all those millions of blue and green and striped and speckled and Donrussy cards completely worthless? For the most part, yeah, but technically not all of them. The cards below, for instance, can bring in more than puzzle piece dust on eBay when you find them in graded PSA 10 condition. They are the most valuable baseball cards in a largely forgettable set. Is it any surprise that the first three cards on this list belong to one man? In 1991, Ken Griffey Jr. was just really starting to make his mark on the game, but pretty much everyone thought he was going to be something special. The card companies were no exception. So they loaded up on the kid, and we're all the better for it nearly 30 years later. This third-year Griffey base card is pretty standard fare, showing the young man at bat in the sunshine in some foreign land, not the kingdom, in other words. It'll never challenge the Mickey Mantle rookie or even Griffey's own 1989 Donruss rookie card, but this one can fetch about $20 in perfect PSA 10 condition. This card isn't much different from Griffey's base issue, though. The shot is a good deal gloomier. Still, the road uniform, though, and the all-star edge and banner do add a bit of pizzazz. In PSA 10, this is a $15 to $20 item. No, Griffey wasn't the league MVP or anything in 1991 or in 1990. Instead, this card is part of a 26-card subset that picked out the MVP for each franchise. In the case of M's, you could pretty much just stamp an all-time qualifier on this baby and call it soup. Unlike the other two Griffies here, this card gives us lots of green and lots of Donruss flair to go with the posed close-up of the Phenom. Another $15 to $20 card went perfect. If there was a veteran equivalent to Griffey in 1991, it was probably Ricky Henderson or Nolan Ryan or Cal Ripken. Ricky was coming off his only MVP award after turning in a monster season in 1990, and he followed that up by breaking Lou Brock's all-time stolen base record in early 1991. Collectors couldn't get enough of Henderson, and his 1980 Topps rookie card rocketed into triple digits. His other cards tagged along for the ride, and there is still plenty of cardboard glow even today. PSA hasn't graded many copies of this card as 10s, and they can fetch $15 or so when they become available. Juan Gon has fallen from grace, same as so many sluggers from his era, but he was once among the most feared mashers in the game. Who didn't think he would wind up in Cooperstown? Now, of course, a Hall of Fame bust seems all but impossible, and this is not even his rookie card. Still, though, it's an early career issue of a dude who helped shape the game and hobby in the 1990s. For that, expect to pay 5 to $15 in PSA 10. See the discussion about Henderson's All-Star stated before, and then add green borders and the patented Ricky Crouch. That's what this card brings you, if you're willing to part with $10 or so. After a few years of taking heat for never taking a day off, Cal had apparently had all he could ahem, take. But rather than lashing out or sitting out, Rip turned in the best season of his career, writing a stupid 11.5 WAR to the American League MVP award. As was the case with Henderson, this surge further distanced Cal's cards from the pack and put them forever in rarefied air. This card features a solid at-bat shot in a blue border and generally sells for $5 to $10 or so in PSA 10. You've heard it before. Every time Ryan appears in a set, that card will be one of the most valuable cards in that set. These cards were about the only thing that outnumbered Ryan's strikeouts, but PSA 10 copies can still bring in $5 or so. Another cow, another batting shot. This one of the follow-through variety. Like the other AS cards on this list, this one benefits from a shot of color and extra design elements. Another card that should set you back about $5. Bonds was a superstar by 1991, but no one really cared, even though he had an MVP award under his belt. Folks just didn't seem to like him all that much. 
Nearly 30 years later, Bond stands as maybe the greatest hitter any of us have ever seen, whether we will admit it or not. And, well, no one seems to like him all that much. So we're left with this early career card that no one cares too much about. It might bring in a few bucks. Bo Jackson was supposed to be everything to everyone, and he just about was at various times during his short Major League Baseball and National Football League careers. That hip injury changed everything, of course, but we still can't shake that Bo mystique. Even a cheapo card like this one can bring in a couple of bucks. David Justice was sort of a golden boy when he came up for the Atlanta Braves, movie star Good Looks, actual movie star Halle Berry for a wife, power hitter for a winning team, and the 1990 National League Rookie of the Year. Like others on this list, Justice rode his popularity to multiple cards in the 1991 Donruss set, and this one celebrated him as an award winner. These days, this is about a $1 card. Same deal with Alomar as with Justice, minus the movie star stuff. ROI, star on upcoming team, award winner card, and worth about a buck or less. Sandberg was Henderson's National League counterpart in the resurgent slash career year department in 1990. Though he didn't win an MVP award as he had in 1984, Rhino banged 40 homers, his most ever, and enough to lead the league. His cards were a couple of alarms behind Ricky's on the scorching scale in 1990-91, but still on fire nonetheless. Another card you should have little trouble snagging for a dollar or less, though graded copies may tick up a bit. If you like this video, remember to like this video and subscribe to our channel, WaxPackGods.com.